Well, the first thing we have to do is make sure that um, secondary and elementary education for First Nations students is equally funded. Currently, it's not. Aboriginal students in Canada uh, at, the, at the secondary and elementary level get 70 cents on the dollar of their provincial counterparts. So that means that if you're a First Nations kid, you get 70% of what a non-First Nations, a settler child gets. That's not right, and that creates huge disparity for First Nations. First Nations is also the very uh, uh, largest growing birth rate in Canada. So if we don't nip this in the bud right now, if we don't equalize payments uh, to, to First Nations students, uh, we're gonna see a huge, huge gap. Uh, that's not right and not fair. Uh, currently, uh, there's an incredible program called Shannon's Dream that a lot of new Democrats helped with, myself included in this region. Uh, Shannon Kustachin was a uh, First Nations youth who tragically died in a car accident, but before she died in that car accident, she went to Parliament Hill more than a few occasions and advocated strongly. She came from a school in Ottawapiskat where kids were literally getting sick of being in the trailers. They were contaminated trailers, didn't have access to funding to fix any of these things, condemned schools, and parents were pulling these kids out of the school saying, I can't send my kid to school, it's dangerous. Uh, she went to the house and said, this has to change, we need better schools, but we also need long-term predictable funding for First Nations education so it's fair, it's equal, and it provides the right opportunities for students to be able to get into this, uh, these type of establishments, these post-secondary schools. We also need to make sure that uh, last, uh, last year, 400 plus Six Nations students were denied access to post-secondary because of lack of funding. We need to reverse that as well. Uh, that point is very important to reference because that's the point that Chief Hill keeps going back to our leaders with and reminding them is that if you want a better future for these communities, one that is very integral and has strong partnerships with communities like Grant for Grant, you need to make sure that everybody is getting an education. And not only that, but making sure that there are opportunities um, on Six Nations territories for them to have a job when they're done their education. A lot of them are forced to um, come into to the urban centers and leave their families, which can be very frightening or um, very just it's a big change for them to leave their communities. And also, a lot of them do want to stay and give back and make sure that the next generation is better off than the, 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 their present one. So one of, we have, I think, the, the strongest platform for First Nations education. And there's three points on how we're going to address funding on this. And it was well received by the AFN, which is the Aboriginal Federations. Um, number one is $515 million yearly uh, increase in, fun in educational funding from kindergarten through grade 12. That is going to be a total investment over four years of $2.6 billion. The other thing we're going to do is invest $500 million over the next three years for immediate First Nations education infrastructure. There is a need right now on Six Nations to build a new elementary school. They're using one of the community <coughs> centers and they're at a stalemate right now to build this new school for their students who need classrooms and running waters and gym facilities and whatnot. And we shouldn't be arguing over what the, what the building looks like or whatnot. We need to make sure that they have good education beginning in kindergarten. The other thing I like about this is this funding begins now when we have the money that we're pledging to do it now. We're not pledging this money in the future. The other thing is that we're doing is 50 million investment and additional annual support for the post-secondary student support program. All right, thank you, Danielle. Phil? <clears throat> it's education with the First Nations Education Act. And uh, just to give you a quick synopsis of that, uh, uh, six uh, First Nations uh, bands in the country put together a program over two years and suggested it to the federal government in terms of recommendations. The federal government adopted every recommendation brought forward legislation based on that panel, uh, including all of the funding that was required. In fact, uh, the then chief of the AFN, Sean Atliel, Chief Atliel, uh, uh, spoke to it and uh, fully endorsed it. Uh, I, I had consultations with Six Nations uh, elected chief on this, asking if this was the funding formula that was acceptable to Six Nations. She absolutely endorsed it and said that's absolutely the funding formula. What happened at the end of the day is forces within the uh, um, uh, the AFN, the, uh, the National Federation of, of uh, First Nations, 
uh, decided that uh, the oversight uh, requirements of the bill were not something that they could live with. In other words, the accountability sections of the bill, it met all of the tests other than that, and they decided uh, Chief Atlio stepped down as chief, and the bill uh, was not defeated, or we withdrew the bill from Parliament. We didn't even bring it to a vote. That's what happened on that in terms of bringing in equitable funding. Listen, we're investing two point, or I'm sorry, 248.5 million over the next five years in Aboriginal labor, labor market training. At Six Nations Polytechnic two months ago, I was fortunate to be able to announce $1.1 million worth of uh, training initiatives for the Polytechnic. It's a fantastic institute right on First Nations, and it, it affords people on First Nations culturally sensitive training in various uh, forms. They're hoping to deliver degree programs in the future. I hope to be part of advocating for that for them. We'll remove the 2% annual cap on funding for First Nations post-secondary education. Mark had mentioned that uh, uh, First Nations students were turned away last year. It's because of that annual cap that is placed. We will not just raise the cap, we will remove it completely to ensure that there is no cap on funding for Aboriginal post-secondary students. We will also restore the Kelowna Accord and its $5.1 billion commitment to two First Nations. And that is money that will be spent on education and healthcare both on and off the reserve. And just in general regarding um, Aboriginal affairs in Canada, we, the Green Party of Canada wishes to transform Canada's relationship with the Indigenous peoples to a true nation-to-nation -nation dialogue and to honour the rights of Aboriginals, including treaty rights and the inherent right to self-government. We will implement all of the calls to action by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission within federal jurisdiction and we will swiftly implement the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And we will also definitely immediately launch a, a full nationwide inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women. Thank you.